Hello everyone, it's Chris the Fast 222 back again for part 3 of the Ender Percent tutorial for Spongebob the movie game. When we left off, we were finishing SCDA and now we're moving on to the first to the second boss battle, Dennis 1. Now I'm gonna be showing you the fast strat to do it, but if you can't do it like this, basically you just wanna have upgraded throw and just keep throwing the melon at him and dodging the enemies. But this is how you do it fast. That's the fast strat. And that's like pro strat, but if you if you can't do that, then just keep throwing it at him. Alright, now on to Sunday driving. I'm gonna show you the strat to skip Goofy Goober. It's called Fast Goober. Basically you just wanna back up and grab that nitro real quick. Take a sharp turn here, try not to get hit and bonked, and grab that nitro and then keep going. And jump over this ramp. Now, as soon as you get the third nitro, you're going to want to start using them and making your way through the side and trying not to hit anything. And if you do it successfully, you grab this nitro too. If you do it successfully and keep going and don't bonk at all and just keep driving really fast, Goober should despawn. Yeah, you see, when you take that turn, you can kind of see him in the background. If you see him really far away, that means you probably did it right. And now, we're going to do all three laps and... We shouldn't see him again, which will allow us to do one of the sequence breaks and another trick. So let's hope Goober doesn't catch up. If he catches up, he ruins the fast Goober trick. So you can't bonk or fall behind or anything. Look out for these gumballs. I bonked. One bonk. You can afford one bonk and not have to catch up. Oh yeah, make sure you go this way on the only second lap. Can I get hit by these? Yeah, I guess. It actually, it doesn't matter. Be super careful not to bonk on that pops, but like, that can make you really catch up too. Even grabbing that nitro could sometimes make Goober catch up. Now we haven't seen Goober for a while, which means we're probably in the clear, but he's might be fast and nice. I don't even see Goober. Okay, he's gone. Goober's gone, boys. We're good. Alright, so now Goober's gone. We can do whatever we want. So, I think I just saw him actually. Now we're fine. Now that he's gone, we can do whatever we want, which means we can do this skip. Goober's actually gone, boys. Like, unless we sat here for like 20 seconds, he wouldn't come back. All right, boys. Time for a final trick. If you do everything correctly, you should save uh, about 30 seconds. So I'm going to grab this nitro and just use it, but keep turning to the left, hold your control stick left, and it should just like throw you over that barrier. It makes no sense, but it's one of the simplest tricks in the game. And that's basically all for fast Goober. You can do the sequence breaks and the tricks. But you can't do uh, you can't do this way the first uh, lap, and you can't do this, the, the the nitro trick on any other lap but the third. This also saves you from having to go on the stupid water slide and have to bonk a lot. So thanks, fast Goober. But if you don't get this strat, oh fuck! If you don't get this in a run, basically just follow Goober. And go go where he goes, or you're gonna you're gonna have to restart, and it's like five minutes long. So good luck on your run. Jeez. Jeez. Well, that's Sunday driving. Right?
Now we move on to Gesk. Google Eyes is smelling knickknacks. The first time you come through here, there's gonna be, there's gonna be like a, like a switch, like a valve, like right there. No, and just follow how I move. Oops, fuck. Oh, that was stupid. Starting over. You see one of three faucets turned. There's a fast way to get some of the fosses, and then there's a fast way to get the second stuff on the upper level. I mean, you can just jump right here and jump right here. And it's kind of a fast way to get to this faucet. And now, we're gonna make our way to the yellow pipe. Now I know how my ancestors felt. Faster, faster! Right back at ya! Now you wanna have yourself on one health. Try to hit these things. There we go, boys. The reason for this is because when we get up here, we're just gonna. Uh, slide into this TNT because it's a death warp. Yeah. So once we uh, landed on the red tube, it kind of registered us as being on the red tube and then it just puts us way up here. Now we're going to make our way to the yellow cord. Oh, I wish this place had something Careful here with your jumps, it's easy to fall off. Alright, so this jump's really tricky, but if you time it correctly, it should be fine. Like that. But you're gonna, want, you're gonna want to do a long jump to this yellow cord, I mean orange cord. And then we're gonna make our way to these cords over here up to the blue one. Now, this is faster than doing it the usual way because of the death warp. And now we have free range get the last target and if you want to do normal strats you just follow the red cord but if you want to do fast strats you can jump up the blue cord kind of slow down a bit and jump up here to skip the red the red lamp Skip to that. Token. Yep. Easy level. Not that easy coming back though. And so Alright. So here comes Dennis 2. It's basically the same as Dennis 1. So uh, you're gonna follow my uh, sponge bowls exactly. Because this makes it fast. The first aim where he is, instantly hit him. Aim to his second place. Really fast. Oops. This is slot. If you hit him when he's doing the animation, it makes it so he skips an entire phase of health. And so once you finish this, you're gonna wanna spam start so the cutscene doesn't start, and then you're gonna wanna go to rub a dub. Now we're gonna be doing more grinding as usual. So we're gonna be grinding through rub a dub time challenge, rub a dub ring challenge, and rub a dub macho time challenge. And there is a trick in this level like to, I like to call dumb jump because it's a really inconsistent jump that we use to skip a, a hefty portion of the level. And we'll be doing it in a bit. Now, uh, I'm not even explaining the setup yet. But it's the only trick in this level. Alright, so this is called dumb jump. 
basically, you want to go up here, kind of roll off, jump. See, sometimes you can't even make it, and, and it does a stupid jump. Basically, dumb jump, you have to find your own way to do it. But basically, you come up to this area. I like to use that thing in the back as a visual cue. See, you, you want to do a full double jump, but you need to know exactly when to time your jumps, because they may glitch out. I like to use that big uh, catapult thingy in the background as a visual cue for where to go off. But if you don't jump at the right, like exact right area, it's gonna just like throw you in a random direction. It's stupid. And if you don't get this like third try in a run, basically, basically bad run. Like what the, f like what, what even? How do you do this, boys? I don't even know how to do this. I mean, I'm good. I can do it sometimes, but. Wow, I'm just really rusty, boys. See, this is why I call it dumb jump, because it's dumb. And it's a jump, technically. By the way, Patrick, when was the last time you took a bath? There's dumb jump. So I don't know what I did. Actually, no, I'm just gonna be cool. If you wanna make dumb jump work for yourself, you're just gonna have to practice it. Because I really can't explain it, boys. It's basically you just go off and you find a certain point to jump, and you do a full jump, make sure you hold the button, and you do a full double jump by holding the button each time. And now it's the normal level. Did Mindy bother to tell us if the train was still running around here? Up until this point, we just a break. Oh, I missed it, because I'm not retarded. Wow. I'm actually just gonna skip this. You basically just do the you do that on the time challenge, the dumb jump and the sequence break. For ring challenge, you just follow the rings. For macho time challenge, you just do the dumb jump and the sequence break. It's basically the same thing that I just showed you. And then after you finish rub a dub grinding, you're gonna go back to guest. And you're gonna do the time challenge, the ring challenge, and the time challenge. Now there is a super pro strat for doing this doing the time challenges fast. It requires a lot of one frame jumps and I'll try to show you right here. I need to get it right now. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again. So if you want to do this level normally you just make your way to the make your way to the to the yellow cord and the blue cord and up there and you do another death warp to the red cord. But if you want to do it fast Wow, I'm suffering today at this trip. Alright boys, I'll show it to you eventually. This is one of the most inconsistent one frame jump tricks in the game. It will kill runs if you attempt it. And aren't good at it. There it is. And then you just jump up here. And then when you get up here, just roll up this tube. Then you just do another death warp off the red cord. Now you're on the red cord and you make your way up the lights and then you're done with this level. And then you do the ring challenge and then the time challenge again. And I would practice those one frame jumps extensively before you attempted them. So we finished grinding, now we have enough tokens to go to Planktopolis. Now this is the final open world Spongebob level, and it's one of the hardest. So we made it, we're gonna talk to Mindy, get, uh, she can't talk to me right now. We're gonna talk to Mindy, get, hold on, I have to use a cheat to unlock it. You're gonna get the Sonic Wave guitar. You 
gonna get the Sonic Wave guitar, and you're gonna upgrade it as soon as you get it. Right? And then you're gonna stand here, then press L as soon as it. No, actually press press R as soon as you see the hand. Time for some long distance communication. Start making your way through here. I don't avoid all these annoying enemies. I didn't avoid them, but there you go. Just jump your way through. And then we're gonna break this wall. Open this box in case you fuck up here. And just jump on the bungee. And gonna, this is like the final bungee, and it's one of the most annoying and hardest. Yeah, you wanna get the infinite bungee glitch by going under. Now, for this one, I don't really like it because it's like. There's so many like damage areas, and if you get hit, you're like fuck. So you kinda have to strategize. And Try to stay above. Try to stay above it, really. All right. Well, I have two health, so I can. You have to be really careful with your health, really. Anyways, you finish that. Now you want to quickly jump on this box and then push against this plankton flag, the SpongeBob, and use that to jump over here and then jump through here and make your way to this little area. And then push, try to push, like, so that Spongebob, hold on. I don't know a consistent way to make this clip, boys. I'd say push against, like, the thing, like this thing. Oh, jeez. Rip me. Well, I'll just show it again. I'd say land on it like this and then push against it. Alright, it kinda it clipped me through quick. You don't really know about that clip, you kinda just have to shake your remote in random directions. Just make your way to this uh, this port ahead. Just, okay, switch to Patrick. Make your way to this ice block, throw the ice block. Make your way to the melon. Hold the melon. Go down. Throw the melon on the platform. Ooh, stuff. The greatest token. <laughs> and now, once we're in here, we're gonna throw the ice block back out. And we're gonna grab another ice block to hold down the platform. We're gonna make our way to the combat challenge. Now for the combat challenge, you're gonna want to start mashing A if you're on GameCube, and if you want to you're, you're gonna want to want to start mashing B if you're on Xbox because that skips all the text frames and you can just instantly start cartwheeling because it's just one enemy. All right, boys. Here comes a diff. Here comes one of the more difficult out of bounds if you're not including Patrick Steamed early, but you need to do this. You know. Even if you aren't that good at out of bounds. So you're gonna want to switch to Patrick and just like jump up there and just grab. Like it will always grab. If you press A on that ledge, it will always grab for you. And so what you're gonna want to do is make your way over here. And don't go in this area, go on this area. So what you're gonna do is fall down with your camera held like this. And you're gonna want to line your camera up so that it's lined up with say this thing, this little line in the ground. Cause that's like a comparison to how how the edge of this border is this ground that we're trying to land on and so we're gonna start falling and then halfway through the fall we can do one jump and just push against the thing and what i like to do is hold cartwheel hold the cartwheel button after i do the first jump and then as soon as i see a cartwheel animation i'll just press a because it means that i've latched onto the area that i want to get the infinite jump on but another way to do it is just jump down do one jump to push against the wall and then start mashing. I'm just gonna show the cartwheel one. Coming through. And then once you get down here, you can like, this is kind of risky, but you can just do cartwheel jump, cartwheel jump, and it's pretty faster. And now I'll show the mashing technique.
Okay. That clip is so free. The mashing is more inconsistent because the cartwheel like latches on to it, but the mashing, you never really know. Like I didn't even get it. So I wouldn't trust mashing. I did the cartwheel strat, but you need to make sure you're pushing up right against the wall at the same angle that that's why you need to move your camera angle so that it's, you're pushing it directly against the wall and not sliding because your car wheel won't really register if you're doing that and you'll just fall. Anyways, I like to be jumping when I reach this door so that it doesn't make me accidentally do Sonic Wave. Oh yeah, so after you get the token down there, you just infinite jump to the token, it, like forwards, and then you teleport to more bounce please. And then you turn around and you make your way in here. Now we're going to be doing a stupid wall jump. But if you want to skip this wall jump, just get a lot of height, get to the top, and as soon as you land on one side, press R, and then start spamming B. Now be careful, you need a lot of height for this or you'll die. Now we just skip most of it, and you can, gr you can press A again to latch in the wall. That's a Sonic Wave Guitar glitch, and it's like the only instance of its use in the run. And now you stand at the edge of that platform and wait for one of the rockets to shoot you. You do a semi bash boost, and then you do a, a Sonic Wave guitar right here to hit this. Except they hit me first, so that's annoying. Got it. Now we're gonna be doing the final SpongeBob of the game, except SCDA SpongeBob, which you'll be doing after this. Try to not stand at the edge of these fans or it'll push you off. Get on this wing, and when you get connected to this other wing, push forward and up. Oops. As soon as you get connected to the other wing, you're gonna want to push forward and up and like right on that like middle center. The center of like the fan. Oops. And it should shoot, it should shoot you upwards and across. And it's like a little time saver, but it saves you from falling off. Because the wing that you're standing on isn't the wing you're supposed to be on. Like this wing doesn't have a dumbbell on it, you're not supposed to be on it. But if you do this, and push against this, it should shoot you in that direction if you're holding up. Now we're, go now we're at the spiral. What I like about spirals is that if you go back a little bit, oops. If you go back a little bit, you can get like upwards momentum. And now these things go in an order that's always uh, the same. Oops, I died. Well, I'm not going to show you the sponge ball. You can learn it for yourself. How do I get out of here? Well, I can't get out of here, so I'm going to finish it. Oh my god, I almost fell because I went too early. Alright, boys. Blue. Let's make this cycle. Yeah, boys. These fans will kill you instantly. You wait for their cycle to end. And even after it ends, it like starts up again immediately. You have to be quick with this. Now for the la this last section, you go on this block, but don't go forward on the block because the, the steam will blow you away. Stay at the end of the block. Now right here, you can kind of skip one of these fans. Oops, that was kind of risky. Don't do that, actually. Anyways, that's all for the last bunk ball. Back to Planktopolis. Hold your camera to the left and start walking backwards. Jump on this conveyor belt. Avoid the robot, hit that thing. And then land on this pedestal thing. It's gonna show a cutscene talking to you about how you're supposed to do some kind of riddle and all this hoopla. And instead of that, you kind of just can just walk over here and do a double jump and spin and start mashing A and you'll just land on this wall. This this jumpy thing. Now for this one. Oops, I went too far up. 
Now for this one, you can get to the platform just from the middle column. So, like this. Oops. I keep going too far. Boing. Boing. I be. Like, you can make that. And now, uh... Now we shoot a uh, bowling ball into these two areas. It's gonna give us a wall platform. Let's just start jumping up it. Make sure you don't fall too high or too low from this. Like, if I started mashing it, I'd fall off. Get that. Alright, you're just going to start walking forward, boys. And you're going to want to land on the very edge of this platform and kind of just wait. Wait for all the rockets to launch and then get to the very end and do a bash boost. Try to land... Okay, that's on... That's on, That doesn't usually happen. They just snipe me mid-air. Usually they don't do that. Anyways, wait for all the rockets to shoot and then go to the edge and then do a bash boost. Try to land either on the platform or under it. And it'll, it'll register your position as on it. See, it respawns you on it. Now you just jump on the bungee. And you start doing Sonic Wave in his eye. Try not to fall off, though. And I fell off. Do a long cutscene, I'd be fine. Yeah, so we're fine. Okay. Rip. Anyway, don't get hit here and just keep Sonic Wave blasting his eye and there'll be a cutscene. I'm not even done yet, boys, and I'm dead. Alright, this is how you actually do it. Immediately do it. Oh, I got floppy legs. Come over. Should be able to get two in. Nope, that doesn't work. It's close, I guess. How does that hit me, boys? Anyways, that's the end of it. It's stupid. And just get that cutscene, you're down with playing topless. <laughs> now what we do is it's gonna load this level, which we don't need to go to. You're almost and after this, we're gonna go to Depression, Sonic Wave Guitar. Switch to Spongebob. There's a way to get up there. I actually found this out a while ago. Whatever. Anyways. You just do the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge. I'm not going to do it because it's very simple. You kind of just fly the Sonic Wave Guitar through a bunch of rings. And you should, you should practice handling it and understanding it. Or this will give you enough practice, actually. So you're going to finish the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge. And then that's all you do here. And after you're done, you teleport to Bubble Blowing Baby Hunt. You go to Throwing the Fruit Electric. You unlocked this earlier, unbeknownst to you. You kind of just cartwheeled past it and unlocked it. What you're gonna want to do is grab the fruit, throw it, and face it this way. Except it gets kind of harder. Go on the slide. Now for this one, you just throw it, and you can't get hit by the electricity while throwing it. So you have to time. And when you see the hand, it means you throw them. For these ones, do not jump early because you will clip into these. I've clipped into these countless times. All right, boys. Now we throw this at the middle platform, we grab it, and try not to get hit while you're grabbing it. That was actually pretty fast. And then you throw it over here, 
and you have to hit this before it goes black and expires in like five seconds. There's your token. And now the second token that we do in BBBH is Sonic Wave Guitar. As you know, you switch to SpongeBob. It's pretty simple. Try not to hit anything though, because it is one of the harder ones. And then after that, we're gonna go to this, the thing you did a death warp in for SCDA. So now we're gonna teleport to the SCDA sponge ball, which is the final token grind we're gonna need to do. Because after this, we'll be able to do the second final level and then the final boss. You've successfully completed a run at this point, so don't choke it right here by going for risky sponge ball strats. Like trying to, like trying to catch that cycle on the spiral. This spiral is uncatchable. Like it's proven. You need to be tasked to catch this. Whoa! Nice. Ooh, that was bad. For this one, just go inside one of the fan cycles. Just go through. For this one, you might want to watch what the cycles are. Like, that's red. Okay, blue's next. Good shit. Just make your way through. And you can just skip that area by doing that. This is the final token you'll need to finish the game. Now we go to the second to last mission, Drive of the Knuckle Heavy Spazitron. What a fitting name. I can bring back the You have the 50 Oh shit, I need 50 tokens. I can bring back the Alright, whatever. So for this level, you basically just drive through a stupid level and you have to go really fast at some points or it's gonna cut you off. It's basically like a redux of Sandwich Driving 101, except you're going backwards through the level and it looks like Planktopolis. And once you finish that, it'll be the final boss, Neptune. And now I'll show you how to do the Neptune strats and not get hit. Don't worry, you're not missing a lot with the driving level pretty easy. The first thing you want to do is hit this one to the right. And as he's doing fire, you want to jump over it and then lead him in the other direction. Keep doing that. This is the surefire way to not get hit. Jump over it and lead him in the other direction. This gives you a leeway to hit, to, to hit the table and do what you need. You gotta hit all the tables and then get the crabs. Stand behind his head. He'll shoot a beam, and as soon as you shoot the beam, you get out and you sonic wave guitar in the head. And now, you do the same thing. We avoid the fire, try to hit the tables as fast as possible. See, sometimes when you're trying to do a spin on the table, it's not that easy to avoid the fire. But if you want a perfect net you can't get hit by fire or anything. Because every time you get hit by fire, it resets the cycle. If you hit all the tables and you're still getting hit, but you don't want to get hit anymore, you can go to the very back of the room and stand in this slab of wood, and you won't get hit by anything. Now we wait. As he does his endless cycles. Poor old Neptune. Alright, boys. Kill SpongeBob! You can kind of uh, explode the bat. Okay, you can you can kind of explode the Sonic Wave guitar, not exactly on his head, like close to his head, and it'll say like a like a half second. All right, now this is the electricity phase. It's much much easier to manage than the fire phase because it's like it's more timing based and not like so hard, so aggressive and like annoying. Just try not to get hit by the beams. Thing is, you have to go. You have to go fast because you don't want to be a second beam. The fastest and the most optimal way to do it would be the first beam you shoot. But if it's not the first beam, it's fine as long as you don't get hit. And I got hit by the easiest to avoid. Whatever. And when he's starting his second electricity, try to put it in the corner so it's easy for you to get the rest of the tails and everything. Now we 
stand in the slab. As we are impervious to the thunder and electricity that's erupting from his scepter. I command you to kill him! Alright, final phase, boys. Skip the cutscene. Alright. Now, what I like to do is kill the spitters, but you don't exactly need to. You, just, you should just avoid them. But yeah, I just find it better to kill them. Because honestly, there's nothing to trouble. Now, I like to get the second electricity field on this one. And I want to get the tables down and kill the spitter, but the DC is already hitting me. That could either just because I'm, that could either be because I'm bad or because this game hates me. Either or would be a valid explanation. Oh, first beam? Yeah, of course. Fast. You can kill the spitters and still get first beam, by the way. It's possible. It's gotta be quick. The second beam over here. I mean, second wave. Put the spitter hitting me. Takes three shots to wreck these fools. Oh, okay, I fell off somehow. The wow. Sloppy tutorial. <laughs> Right I'm now. not even killing spitters. You don't need to kill spitters. If you don't need them, if you don't need to kill them, it's all on you. It's just avoid them. And if you're quick enough, they shouldn't even be able to get off the spits. Is the slab still here? Yeah, boys. You still get hit from the slab though by the spitters. Probably should stay there. Come on, Neptune. Neptune, no. This is why we kill the spitters. All hail, Even my own tutorial on being trash. I'm just not gonna get hit by them. I'm just gonna avoid them. Isn't that like a. It's basically the, the best strat here. Oh, I'm gonna see that again. I got my bad at Alright, these dudes are getting murdered. Sorry, dude. Oh. He just hit me with his flipper. Alright, guys. You get the gist of it. You know how to fight him. I'm bad. Thanks for watching my tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them on the c in the comments. I stream on www.twitch.tv www slash ChrisTheFast52. Thanks for watching, everybody.